Hi, this is another video in the playlist where we're looking at probability trees. And in this particular one, we've got a box of chocolates, uh, six milk chocolates and four plain chocolates in a box. Um, John takes at random a chocolate from the box. And importantly, importantly to Josh as well, is that he eats it. OK, so in other words, the second time round when he takes another chocolate, there's going to be less chocolates in the box. There's actually going to be one missing. So let's see how that works with the probability tree diagram that we are first being asked to complete. So, OK, so in the first um, chocolate pick, he's got six milk chocolates and four plain chocolates. So in other words, he's got 10 chocolates altogether, of which six out of 10 are milk and four out of 10 are plain. OK, the difficulty then for this particular diagram is that he eats one of these chocolates. So therefore, the second time that he eats a chocolate, there's only actually nine of them left in the box. Now, the way I generally tend to do this is I fill it out in this way that I always kind of figure out that actually one's going to go. So therefore, I'm going to put them out of nine. It just helps me to remember each time what I'm going to do. OK, well, if he has a milk chocolate the first time round, there were six milk chocolates in the box, but now there's actually only five. So there's a five out of nine chance that he's going to have another milk chocolate. However, there's still four left in the box. OK, so the four plain chocolates are going to be there. So this particular second outcome here is going to be as a result of eating a milk chocolate the first time round. There's now going to be five rather than the initial six. And there's only nine chocolates in the box because he's eaten one of them. OK, and there's going to be four plain chocolates still left in the box because he had a milk chocolate the first time round. OK, so let's look at what happens when he had a plain chocolate the first time round. Well, because there were four plain chocolates and he's eaten one of them, there's actually now only going to be three plain chocolates left in the box. But there's still going to be six milk chocolates. OK, I hope that's clear to you. The way that I've um, I've worked through this is the way that I normally suggest with my students to to be very, very logical in the way that you put these things together. OK, so the next um, question then deals with finding the probability that Josh eats at least one plain chocolate. Well, let's have a look at the outcomes. What's going on here? OK, so the outcomes are that the first time round he had a milk and then he had a milk again. So we're not actually interested in that one. We're only interested in the ones where he's had at least one plain chocolate. So the next time round he has a milk and then he has a plain. Now remember what we're doing is we're traveling along the branches. The third time plain and then milk, or the third possibility is plain and then milk. And then the final possibility would be plain and then plain again. OK, so those are the four possible outcomes that I can use. And if you've drawn your diagram like this, then hopefully you should be able to follow the branches through. OK, so let's have a look at the probability for each of those. So find the probability that John eats at one, least one plain chocolate. So let's have a look. So this one I'm interested in, this one I'm interested in, and this one I'm interested in because here is at least one of them is plain. OK, happens to be both of them, but at least one of them is plain. This one, one is plain and this one, one is plain. So the probability that he eats a milk and then a plain is going to be a milk is six out of ten and then a plain is four out of nine. So I multiply those together, six out of ten times four over nine, and that's going to give me 24 over 90. Now, I do suggest that you don't you're not tempted to kind of reduce that at the moment because we're going to add all of these probabilities together. So the second one is going to be plain and milk. Well, the first time would be four out of ten for plain. 
and then the second time for uh, plain and then milk would be six out of nine. So four out of 10 multiplied by six out of nine. And that again is going to give you 24 out of 90. And then the final one that we're interested in is the two planes. So the first one is four out of 10 and then three out of nine. So I can write that as plain plain four out of 10 multiplied by three out of nine, which is going to be 12 out of 90. OK, so if I add up all of these together, I'm going to get 24 plus four, uh, 24 is 48 plus another 12 again is going to be 60. So that would be a total of 60 out of 90. And that would be the answer to this particular question. Or if you preferred, you could reduce it down to two thirds. It doesn't actually ask you to give it its simplest form, but sometimes it's just a good way of answering the question. OK, I hope that's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Have a look at some of the other videos within this particular playlist. And I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.